Sunrise is absolutely the apogee. It's, it's the greatest silent film ever made. Sunrise is an amazing accomplishment, one of the most remarkable motion pictures ever made. Sunrise is the greatest of all silent movies. It's the one where anything that you want to see that could be done in a silent movie is done. It really was the end of the silent era. All the uh, lessons that had been learned in cinema's short lifespan were put to use by Murnau. He got this enormous location out there, outside of the studio, where they would build a village for him. They would plant trees wherever he thought they should be planted. They would even put the leaves and sow the leaves on the trees. They would design the blossoms that would come out on these trees. Murnau was always interested in the contrasts of city and country, or the tensions that existed between the surface and the underneath. He was interested in erotic tensions and the stresses they brought to people. Murnau was very demanding. He was a perfectionist. He was not one to suffer fools gladly. Often the tension on the set would be so overbearing that they would pray for Janet Gaynor to show up because she was really the only one who could break the tension. Janet Gaynor always said to the end of her days that she'd never quite had an experience like that with him. And the man, George O'Brien in the film, the shape of his body and the, the tension as an expression of the way this man is being torn in two different directions by two women and by, and by country and city and, you know, the whole dichotomy that that represents. It's an amazing piece of almost dance-like acting. George O'Brien is nearly six foot, about 190 pounds. Murnau put to use his physicality really well in Sunrise. He's a hulking, lumbering, stooped figure in the first third of the film. George O'Brien put these incredible weights in his shoes so that he would shuffle along like Frankenstein and then remove them for the city sequences. It subtitled a song of two humans. It's a visual song. It's almost exalting in its visual beauty. They used every trick in the book on that film to get the effects that they wanted. The set of the house was built with slanted floors. They were able to build a track from the river to the city. That's a mile long. Imagine how much money that cost and almost how much care went into it. They ride from the pastoral setting into the city. There was a lot of argument over it being expensive. Look at the sets and ask yourself what is a set and what is real and what, we, what do we mean by those terms, you know, because what you get in Sunrise is a world the city particularly, it doesn't, it seems like a city, it doesn't seem like a set. And yet obviously you know that it's, it's very well organized in certain ways, so that it must be built and constructed. The huge city set was built on the Fox lot, part of it in false perspective. That means that the set was, not all of it, but part of the set was built with buildings receding as you go toward the background, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So, as one cinematographer put it, if you tried to go through a doorway that you see at the back of the image, you couldn't. It was so tiny, but you couldn't tell. It was like a Renaissance painting shaped toward a vanishing point. The sets of Sunrise were also used in Seventh Heaven, where the, the taxes of Paris are mobilized to bring the troops to the front. Then, of course, John Ford used it for Four Sons. Many Fox films, of course, used this incredible setting afterwards. Murnau was not a realistic kind of filmmaker, but a filmmaker who delighted in an artistic approach to telling a story. The art director was a major exponent of recreating the world in the studio. He created this kind of world within a world. 
This idea of wanting to create a world that is of really no one space, but of everywhere, a universal language, to be everywhere and nowhere at the same time. And Sunrise contains all of that. His cameramen, Charles Rocher and Carol Stris, must have just reveled in working with Murnau. There's a term that directors use for an intricate shot, which means it's called a special. A special is a shot that is pre-designed, and they take sometimes several days to shoot. Sunrise is full of specials. There must be a dozen of them in there. Intricate shots where the, the equipment and the sets and everything had to be built uh, sometime months in advance. Charles Rocher, the cameraman, wrote afterwards that in order to get as great a sense of depth as possible, they would do things like the light bulbs in the scene would be smaller and smaller as you moved into the distance, and the people in the background would be shorter. Sunrise was one of the earliest films that had traveling mat shots. The figure is actually placed into a background, and the background can be filled in behind them as they move, but it was extremely difficult to do that. Someone is taking you on a ride cinematically. They are using the medium. You enter into it and you move. It never rests. When you watch this film, imagine how intrusive it would be if you actually heard one of these characters speak. These components created a transcendent type of production. It changed everything. Murnau has developed an almost separate vocabulary of film. It's similar to where movies are going, but not quite the same thing. In the late teens, early 20s, they began showing films to audiences to see what the reaction would be. Sunrise was previewed south of San Francisco in March of 1927. The general questions that they asked would be, well, did you like the movie? And did you like the characters? And did you like the actors who played the characters? And what did you think of the ending? And, and that sort of thing. There aren't very many titles in Sunrise, but there were fewer titles, I think six fewer, in the version that was previewed in March. They decided after seeing the film and seeing the audience's response that this would be a great film to feature the first movie tone score. Sunrise was meant to be a silent film. We don't know when the idea to add a synchronized score, we don't know when that decision was made. 